Hello, my name is Kate Bentley. Thank you so much for having me today to give you a Fizz talk. I'm very excited to be here. The title of my talk today is Elliot, Empathy and Epilepsy. My son Elliot is about to turn nine and he has epilepsy and he's taught me a lot about empathy. As far as physiatry, we want to be empathetic towards our patients, and I've always tried to be empathetic, and I know we all do. However, having Elliot as our son has helped us be more empathetic than we ever could have imagined. When I say we, I mean my husband and I, because he's been with me for this whole journey thus far. So my name is Kate Bentley. My dad was a pediatrician and my mom a nurse practitioner. They've supported me in all of my endeavors thus far. I graduated from the Lawrenceville School in 1998, and then I went off to Middlebury College where I was a neuroscience major and also on the ski patrol. This was in Vermont. I spent one winter between college and medical school teaching adaptive skiing. This was in Park City, Utah at the National Ability Center. That's when I learned that I wanted to be a pediatric physiatrist. I wanted to figure out a way to take my skiers as my patients, and I realized that physiatry was the way to do this. I returned home to New Jersey, where I attended Rutgers New Jersey Medical School, and I continued along for residency and my pediatric rehabilitation medicine fellowship. I did these at Rutgers New Jersey Medical School, Kessler, and Children's Specialized Hospital. I feel very fortunate to have chosen pediatric rehabilitation medicine, and I have the privilege of caring for children and families each day. One of these children could be my son, Elliot. I'm the mother of three amazing children. Alfie, who's 13, is my residency baby. He's kind, inquisitive, and intelligent. Elliot, who's about to turn nine, is my fellowship baby, and he's had many healthcare challenges. He handles his situation with courage and grace. Annabelle, my attending baby, is spunky, graceful, and caring. I will share my experience with Elliot. Each memory has been imprinted upon my mind and helped shape me as a physician, mother, and caregiver. E is for Elliot Mayer Bentley. So November is Epilepsy Awareness Month, so I wanted to take a moment to talk about epilepsy. One in 26 people in the United States develop epilepsy at some point in their lifetime. 65 million people live in the world with epilepsy, and up to 10% of people will develop seizures. Elliot was born full term, and unbeknownst to us, he was ready to take on med many medical challenges. We named him after my dad, Elliot, and although they never met, they would have been kindred spirits. Elliot started with nystagmus when he was three months old. His eyes were shaking all the time. He had an MRI with sedation. Elliot did great. My husband and I were traumatized. It's very overwhelming to watch your baby be sedated. The swiftness of the experience is heartbreaking. We had to be strong for Elliot, but that, at that point, I realized what my patients were going through and their parents every time they were sedated for procedures and now I never think of it the same. At five months of age, Elliot started twitching. He was twitching when he was playing, he was twitching when he was eating, and he was twitching when I was rocking him. My attending at the time said, Kate, kids are meant to worry us. I really wish that this was only a worry, but I knew there was something more. After less than about 12 hours of what was supposed to be a three-day EEG, Elliot was diagnosed with epilepsy. One of my colleagues in New Jersey was very kind when he explained that Elliot had epilepsy. I was in shock, but we went home on Keppra. E is for emergency. Unfortunately, Elliot's been in the hospital more times than I can count. He has treatment resistant epilepsy, and we know how sick he is based on how much he's happy to be in the ambulance. If he's not that sick, he's really happy to be in the ambulance. If he's very sick, he doesn't even know we're in ambulances. He's been treated in the hospital for at least five inpatient EEGs, four admissions to the PICU for respiratory distress, and we also had a ketogenic diet admission. When you fail two anti-epileptic medications, your chance of failing the third is very high. Our wonderful team in New Jersey sent us to CHOP to start on a ketogenic diet. At that point, I didn't even know that children who eat by mouth could be on ketogenic diets, but off we went. We still didn't know exactly why Elliot had epilepsy, but we knew we had to take care of it. During this week, Elliot became a keto kid and I became a keto mom. I watched classes and learned all about how to be his mom and take care of him. Elliot is the expert and I am the chef. So on the Wednesday, Elliot was acidotic 
and hypoglycemic. And I was thinking, what did I do to my baby? We persevered and Elliot has been on a ketogenic diet for seven years. We knew he was a true keto kid when we went by old McDonald's for his brother and Elliot said, mommy, do you think they have heavy cream and oil at McDonald's? I wanted to talk for a second about the Charlie Foundation. Charlie's parents started this foundation after 1993 when he started on a ketogenic diet. There's lots of great resources here for our patients and families. E is for EEF1A2. We have been blessed with lots of caring healthcare providers for Elliot, but we still didn't know exactly why he has epilepsy. And as physicians and specifically physiatrists, we always wanna figure out why. I knew Elliot had epilepsy and I knew he had ataxia, but I just didn't know why. We found Dr. Davinsky, who is a brilliant epileptologist, but he's also a very kind and caring man. Now, when we go see him, Elliot can't fit on his lap, but they always have a very nice bond. After whole genome exome sequencing, we realized Elliot has EEF1A2. This is a rare genetic mutation causing severe infantile epilepsy. At this point, I learned more about social media. When Elliot was first diagnosed, there were about 30 children that we knew of in the world with this condition. Now there's a few more, but it's still very rare. I was able to find an EEF1A2 website and a researcher named Dr. Bird in Scotland. Dr. Davinsky helps us take care of Elliot's day-to-day -day issues with epilepsy, and Dr. Bird is working very hard with her team to help find a brighter future for all of our children. The next thing I found on social media was another mom. She is a mom of a child with a severe epilepsy, and she's also a researcher too. She's a very big advocate for her child. I noticed that her child had lots of services that I thought might help Elliot. And unfortunately, in 2017, Elliot had to come home with oxygen in, in the evenings. So he sleeps with oxygen and a monitor. This allowed us to apply for a Medicaid waiver and he got an MLTSS waiver. We realized that to survive, we needed a team. And now we have a whole team for Elliot. We have nurses, friends, family, school, community, doctors, therapists, and teachers. And we all work very hard to take care of our Elliot. After we got the oxygen, we wanted to take Elliot on a trip, but I felt very overwhelmed with how in the world was I gonna take Elliot and oxygen on an airplane? So we applied for a Make-A-Wish trip. If this is something that any of your patients could experience, I would recommend applying. This trip was wonderful for Elliot, but as you can see, it was also wonderful for our entire family. We will never forget it. E is for extraordinary. My children are very lucky to have each other and I'm very lucky to be their mother. Alfie is the leader of the bunch, and although it is not his responsibility to take care of Elliot, he can take care of him as well as anyone I've ever met. I know it's not easy to be Elliot's brother, but I'm confident that the young, empathetic man that Alfie is becoming has a part because he is Elliot's brother. Annabelle has already surpassed Elliot in many ways, and as first, as a parent of a child with special health care need, this is very devastating. However, when we switched our thinking, we realized that Annabelle brings him up. Annabelle learned to ride a two-wheeler bike, and although Elliot can't ride a two-wheeler bike and he may never be able to, he learned to pedal his bike with his adaptive training wheels, and he's so proud of himself. Annabelle has a lot of questions, and we're trying to figure out how to answer her now. Mommy, why does Elliot fall? Mommy, why does Elliot scribble scrabble? Mommy, why does Elliot need tethers when he skis? For now, I tell her he has epilepsy. He has been sick, but he's doing much better. At the end of the day, all she wants to do is pay with her brother. And she told me, Elliot is my prince. And in this picture, her Batman. E is for exuberant. Our family is exuberant and I'm so lucky to be part of it. Being Elliot's mother and a doctor mother has been possible for me. A few things I've learned along the way, although I know I have a lot more to learn are take advice from others, but continue to use the skills that you've learned in your training to advocate for your child. One thing that's been kind of interesting is when I take Elliot somewhere, I realize that some of my patients are gonna be there. The first time this happened, I felt a little funny, but now I just say, yep, I'm Dr. Bentley, I'm Elliot's mom, and we're also here for therapy. I hope this talk will help empower other physiatrists who may have family members with similar challenges. I hope we will continue to treat our patients with empathy and use our experience to move us forward. I've learned 
This is a marathon, not a sprint. So we take it one day at a time and we hope for forward progress. Thank you so much.